So I want to show you my uh, little milling pallet which I've uh, made, which I use on the lathe basically for squaring up stock. And so if I've, uh, let's have a cut a piece off the bandsaw, a bit of aluminium, something like that. Obviously these edges aren't going to be perfectly square with there, they're going to be pretty close, but, but you know, I need to mill them off, get them nice and square if I want to use it for uh, making something. So I built this little um, a mini pallet, people have been calling them, and it's basically a one inch thick piece of uh, aluminium um, slab by 100 mil wide. And what I did was uh, I sort of chunk off the end here and um, well, I, I mounted it in my um, vertical slide so I could actually mill it flat. And then it's been bolted from underneath and a couple of dowel pins put in the top there so that. Um, so that basically it holds it square so it's not going to move around. And then I drilled and uh, counterbored four holes which line up with the uh, T-slots in the uh, cross slide. And these two little pieces of uh, mild steel clamped onto the side there just so that when I'm setting it I can pull it up sort of tight up against the edge of the uh, cross slide so I know that it's all square. I also then just run a clock along it just to check that it is bang on square. But the way it works, quite simply, uh, obviously put a milling cutter in, in your lathe. If you're milling, you're better off putting it in a collie chuck, but for uh, just this sort of rough milling that I'm doing, I, I don't really bother. I just uh, stick it in the three jewel chuck. Uh, one thing though, which is a good idea, is uh, if you just get some normal writing paper or something like that, and just do one wrap around the uh, the cutter. That'll actually help to uh, secure it in there. There's less likelihood of uh, the tool still slipping on the uh, on the jaws of the lathe. Just adds that a little bit more security and stops it. You don't want any, you know, accidental movement of the uh, cutter got coming either coming in or coming out. So a piece of paper helps to prevent that as well. So what I need to do is be able to pack the material up. So I've got a couple of um, a couple of parallels. The wrong way around. That's the way. So I'll use a couple of parallels in there. I take my piece of stock which I've cut off. Obviously, make sure there's no burrs or anything on there, and uh, just mount that up nice and square against the back. And then, of course, you can put your clamp. Oh yeah, the other thing, of course, lots of holes, lots of holes drilled in here, uh, which have been tapped to M8, so that you've got uh, plenty of positions for putting your clamps on. So in this instance, this clamp will go on there. Mm -hmm. And I made these clamps also. It's uh, just mild steel. Uh, you can buy these obviously, but with a slot milled out the back there uh, and uh, taps, M6 tapped hole there. So you can put a bolt in and you can use that. Uh, well, basically I'll show you here. You, you use that, that uh, M6 screw there as your packing piece. So obviously you want to lift it just slightly higher than so the, the clamping force is down on onto the work piece. And I'll just uh, pinch that up. So then you just um, hold it nice and square against the back so you know that that's nice and square and you just pinch that up. Okay so that'll hold that perfectly securely while, uh, while we do a, a run across on the mill. So, I don't know whether you're going to see this, I might zoom in a bit. I'll tell you what, I'll change the position. So, now it's all clamped up. I can start the lathe up, and all I simply do is uh, I set my position. So, I just wind in the carriage. I'm actually using the, uh, the lead screw and the hand wheel at the end so I can get a bit more precision over what I'm doing. I wind that inch it just touches and then I'm just going to take a 10 down, 10 down so I lock the carriage up. So I actually use the, uh, the lead screw to advance and I've uh, made this hand wheel which has got uh, graduations at every 5 thou. So I can use that then to just, uh, just advance the cutter, 10 thou. Then we just take a little 10 thou cut and I'm winding in the cross slide.
job's a good one. Obviously if you're milling to a size, you can use it for that as well if you want to get a specific size. And there you see, I'll get my little uh, square. Where are you square? Where have you gone? Okay, so you pieces now, nice and square. And of course, once you've squared that off, you just knock any burrs off if you need to do another side. You've now got one square side, so you can take any old rough bit of um, metal. So these these are just like rough sawn. They're not square. Well, they, they are now, actually, because I've milled two sides. But whatever it is, you can, as long as you get it, you know, put it up against it. doesn't matter if it's a rough edge. Mill it off first, get one edge square. Then of course you can use that square edge then to index it basically and, and mill all the other sides nice and square. So another thing I've made which uh, helps with any milling on the lathe is um, it's basically a dial test indicator and uh, I've made a small little mount for it. Um, so it's it's a magnetic base, I've put some cork on the bottom of there just so it doesn't uh, damage the ways and uh, just a little brass um, upstand with uh, obviously a hole drill through it for the so you can adjust the uh, the length of the way you, where you want to position it and just a little locking screw there and that simply um, that simply sits on the, the lathe bed and you can then uh, just adjust that or position it wherever you need it so then for instance, if I wanted to, if I if I wasn't using the um, lead screw, I could actually just use the hand wheel, and that'll give me. Uh, let's take the lock off. Might help. You can use the hand wheel, and that'll give you an indication. So this this actual DTI is a metric uh, DTI. So sometimes I'm working in metric, and obviously then with the hand wheel, rather than me having to calculate anything out, if I just turn the hand wheel now, I've got. Um, I you know I can use that as a as a guide if I'm working in metric as well. So uh, best of both worlds really. And that's a nice little addition to the workshop too. It's nice and easy to make. So there you go, a simple milling palette for the lathe.